were tanks on the corners in Milwaukee in the spring of 68. There were riots and marches and rallies and strikes and we would graduate. We trusted all the reporters as the Tad Offensive spun. We listened to the doors, the end, drank beer and went up. We signed each other's yearbooks on the front steps of the Y. Over pictures we'd taken to look our best, we would laugh and cry. We danced inside the armory together one last time to the outsider's time won't let me we were in our prime innocent and open we were born again into the wild night of the future we would begin there were some who would leave forever And some who would stay There were some who would come full circle And some would pass away Though it's been a half a century It seems like yesterday We tore off our gowns Partied into the morning then walked away Into the world we'd stumble and march Though dots on graphics, numbers on charts We would always be a part of and remember The class of 68 We would begin our friends we would begin for we were born again we would begin the road that would never end in 68 we would begin some guys went to vietnam we would begin some girls became a mom we would begin we held the world in our palms in 68 Lisa Vijos, and on behalf of Mead Public Library and 100,000 Poets for Change, I want to welcome you today for this open mic poetry reading. Today, this, this weekend, today and this weekend, in, in cities big and small all over the world, people are getting together just like we are to share poetry and to think about the ways that by coming together and listening to each other, we automatically make the world a better place just by listening to each other's voices. And we do this because we believe that by listening to each other, we actually can let go of things that we think are our differences and start to find common ground with the people right around us. So today we're in Mexico, we're in India, Ireland, Morocco, we're in Tallahassee and Seattle, LA, Chicago, and right here in Sheboygan. Close to 500 cities all over the world are doing just what we are, coming together to support and promote 
peace and justice and a sustainable, healthy planet. So this year is the first time in my eight years of organizing a Sheboygan event for 100,000 Poets that I decided maybe we need a theme this year. Now, the theme can be loosely defined, but my theme grew out of a wonderful poem that I learned about that is, you're going to hear today. It's actually the lyrics to a song, and the song is called Movimiento, and it's by the Uruguayan singer-songwriter Jorge Drexler. And there's a, there's a refrain in the lyrics where he says, I am not from here, but you're not either. From nowhere at all, from everywhere, a little. And something about that really inspired me and made me think, wow, yes, we're all kind of from everywhere and nowhere and everywhere, and we need to think about that. And so you're going to hear this today. And you'll get to hear it in two languages, actually. And so stay tuned for that. Um, but before we begin, I do want to thank Mead Public Library, and especially my friend and cohort, Jeannie Gartman, for hosting us today. I want to thank Josh Lintauer for the wonderful poster. And also want to thank John Dahl for coming and opening up the show with his music. Thanks to WSCS for recording us. And thank you all for sharing and listening. I do want to share one poem that um, actually it's um, inspired in two parts by our poster that was made, which, which mentioned something about being a good citizen of the world. And that kept ringing in my head. And then also I use a phrase in here that I must um, uh, give to my friend Jenny Estrada, she, she coined this phrase, new wave. And Jenny's running for the 25th Assembly District, so I just want to get that in there. And she's, her daughter's going to be sharing a poem today. But this poem is called Citizens of the World, and it's for Jenny. We are citizens of the world. Our Congress is the trees. Their branches represent us to the sky. We are citizens of the earth. We vote for the land. It gives us our food, a safe place to sleep. We are citizens of the sea. We are a new wave upon us rising, the ship of our hearts. All right, everybody. Um, let's, oh, yes, you're welcome. No, I mean, thank you. Thank you all for being here. And now let's um, launch off our afternoon of poetry with some music from John Dahl. Give him a hand. First song inspired by a quote that the uh, Dalai Lama supposedly said to somebody at one point, um, and I think it was kind of around the time when the uh, Chinese were taking over Tibet, and he was maybe 15 years old or something, and uh, one of his minions just went crazy one day, he was very anxious, and said, you know, we got to do something, they're, you know, they're coming, they're taking over the city, they're taking over our country, we have to go. And he apparently looked up from his meditation pose and said, trouble might be coming, but it's not here yet. <laughs> so that's kind of the way I've been thinking about these last couple of years. <laughs> so it's a... Trouble, to trouble, trouble. I see it from here, angry soldiers at my gate. Trouble, trouble, I see it from here, angry soldiers at my gate. Lined up in order, 24 deep, with plans to attack while I sleep. Trouble might be coming, trouble might be. It'll be all right. Mm, trouble, trouble, I hear its voice. Drums, guns, and thunder. Mm, trouble, trouble, I hear its voice. Guns and thunder, with a pound and rumble, the river rolls on beyond the dark horizon. Trouble might be coming. Trouble might be coming. Trouble might be coming, but it's not here yet. When it comes, when it comes, when it comes, when it comes, when it comes. 
trouble, I feel the pain and the strain of a broken heart. Trouble, trouble, I feel the pain and the strain of a broken heart. When longing and lonely together appear under a shadow of fear, trouble my the poem Movimiento by Jorge Drexler, the one that inspired Lisa to talk about movement and migration and immigration and all those things that we as people do. I'm Ale, I'm, I'm from Bolivia, so yes, I don't, I'm not from here. <laughs> I'm going to read it in Spanish. Apenas nos pusimos en dos pies, comenzamos a merigar por la sabana. Siguiendo la manada de bisontes más allá del horizonte a nuevas tierras lejanas. Los niños a la espalda y expectantes, los ojos en alerta, todo oídos, olfateando el desconcertante paisaje nuevo, desconocido. Somos una especie en viaje. No tenemos pertenencias, sino equipaje. Vamos con el polen en el viento. Estamos vivos porque estamos en movimiento. Nunca estamos quietos, somos transhumantes. Somos padres, hijos, nietos y bisnietos de inmigrantes. Es más mío lo que sueño que lo que toco. Yo no soy de aquí, pero tú tampoco. Yo no soy de aquí, pero tú tampoco. De ningún lado del todo, de todos lados un poco. Atravesamos desiertos, glaciares, continentes, el mundo entero de extremo a extremo, empecinados supervivientes, el ojo en el viento y en las corrientes, la mano firme en el remo. Cargamos con nuestras guerras, nuestras canciones de cuna, nuestro rumbo hecho de versos, de migraciones, de hambrunas. Y así ha sido siempre desde el infinito. Fuimos la gota de agua viajando en el meteorito. Cruzamos galaxias, vacío, milenios, Buscábamos oxígeno y encontramos sueños. Apenas nos pusimos en dos pies y nos vimos en la sombra de la hoguera, escuchamos la voz del desafío. Siempre miramos el río pensando en la otra ribera. Somos una especie en viaje. No tenemos pertenencias, sino equipaje. Nunca estamos quietos, somos transhumantes. Somos padres, hijos, nietos y bisnietos de inmigrantes. Es más mío lo que sueño que lo que toco. Y yo no soy de aquí, pero tú tampoco. Yo no soy de aquí, pero tú tampoco. De ningún lado del todo y de todos lados un poco. Lo mismo con las canciones, los pájaros, los alfabetos. Si quieres que algo se muera, déjalo quieto. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Marcos. I'm... She's my better half. Um, one of the reasons that this, this poem, song, attracted us is because it's written in, in a form called Decima, which was uh, created in Spain during the Moorish occupation of the peninsula there. It no longer is used in Spain. It is now a form that exists extensively throughout Latin America. So much like what the poem is about, the form is born of migration and movement. So here goes in, in English. Motion by Jorge Drexler. As soon as we stood on our, feet, our two feet, we began to migrate through the savanna, following the herd of bison beyond the horizon to new lands, distant. The children on our backs and expectant, eyes alert, all ears, smelling the baffling new landscape, unknown. 
We're a traveling species. We don't have belongings. We have luggage. We travel with the pollen, in the wind. We're alive because we're in motion. We are never still. We're transhuman. We're parents, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of immigrants. My belongings are what I dream, more so than what I touch. I'm not from here, but you're not either. I am not from here, but you aren't either. Not from one place entirely, but from everywhere a little. We cross deserts, glaciers, continents, the entire world from end to end. Stubborn. Survivors. Our eye on the wind and to the currents, a hand firm on the oar. Carrying our wars, our lullabies, our journey made verse, our mi of migrations of famine. And that's how it's always been from infinity. We were the drop of water on the meteorite. We crossed galaxies, the void, millennia. We were looking for oxygen. We found dreams. As soon as we stood on our two feet and saw ourselves in the shadow of the bonfire, we heard the voice of challenge. We always look at the river thinking of the other side. We're a traveling species. We don't have belongings. We have luggage. We are never still. We're transcendent. We're parents, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of immigrants. My belongings are what I dream, more so than what I touch. I'm not from here, but you aren't either. I'm not from here, but you aren't either. Not from one place entirely, from everywhere a little. The same for songs, for birds, for alphabets. If you want something to die, let it be still. Thank you. I'm going to invite Marilyn Zilke Window to come up to the stage because a year or so ago, Marilyn um, is part of another poetry reading event, created a response to this poem, and I'd like her to share that with us. So can you come on up? Yes, I'm Marilyn Zelke Window. I'm from Sheboygan Falls. <clears throat> it, was, it was such a wonderful uh, song to put more words to, my own words, my interpretation. This is called United in Dream. Sing, sing the song of birds that rested you from slumber, from aching feet, following animals for food, from those tired arms which carried your child in dream state. Be the dream state. Praise and fear the mountains you travel. Glory in the miles of savanna you tread. Imagine in your mind the birth of crops, of sustenance, of life, ongoing for family. We are united in these wishes, yours from the south of our earth, mine from the northeast, from a different sea to cross, from a different route to take, but with the same mindset, the same lyric of hope. The immigrant baggage we hoist is heavy. Our, our families know that burden. We share that journey. Sing the troubles, sing the trials, sing the sickness, cry the infant buried at sea, then listen again. Listen to the survivors of the wind and the currents and the wars. We are united as genetic travelers on that water droplet, on that rock of ages, that meteorite. We seek the vapor of life, oxygen. Our cattle know the barriers. They stretch their noses beyond fences. They forever seek the sweet grass, always beyond their grasp. We could learn from our animals, but here is the difference between us. We dream for more than sustenance of body. We see not grass, but a river, and dream about the other side. We know no barriers. We dream for more than we can touch. Our dream unites us. We are the dream. Thank you. 
Hi, so I'm Emily, I'm from Sheboygan, and this poem doesn't have a title yet because I'm terrible at naming things. <laughs> Show me. I want to see. I want to understand who you are from where you came. Tell me your stories from across the seas, from below the border. Desert cities where sands blow like storms. Busy markets filled with shouts and greetings. Spoken in languages that taste of spices and chocolate. Tell me the bad, the terrible, the brought that brought you, the desert blown apart with explosions, houses crumbling to dust as the light fades, the market blasted with gunshots, people dropped to the ground with screams and pleas of desperation. Tell me the hope and sorrow you felt, boarding that boat, crossing that fence, stepping foot in the golden land of opportunity, only to be met with hatred and scorn from this land of immigrants. The color of your skin equals the worth of your soul. To survive, you give in to the flow. Your words now taste sour and of coal. Trade culture for a job, home, clothes, afraid to be who you are. So tell me your stories in whispers and let them be carried away. Let them seek out the other whispered words until the whispers become a voice, become a scream, because you, who crossed oceans, crossed borders, crossed cultures, you are the best of us. You are the bravest of us. Let me tell you, the immigrants, the outsiders, the refugees, all of you othered by America's broken, backward, self-righteous regime, you are the ones who are making America great again. Hi, I'm Caitlin Becker. I'm a senior this year and I was born in Kenosha and moved up here to Sheboygan six years ago. The title of this poem is called Fools. From nowhere at all, from everywhere a little. Fools. We are fools. We want the best but expect the worst. We believe others will come along and make everything go smoother. We want others to do things for us but complain when we grow tired of their ways. We say we are free, but there are millions who don't know what that means. Child slavery, human trafficking, and poverty do not go away. Innocent until proven guilty, you make sure the truth is twisted into lies so you won't be compromised. It's all the same. We are fools expecting things to get better without any work, and yet complain about the work of those who do. Our country was founded by immigrants and inspired millions about a better life. Our streets are paved with gold, and people are not persecuted in the night. Our flag stands firm, the statue stands tall, and we are the fools mixed with them all. Lots of great words coming out of our youth and everyone. So um, next up is Stephen Golden. Stephen's visiting us from California. Come on up. Uh, two years ago, uh, I vacationed on Oahu, and along with all the other tourists, uh, I visited a scenic outlook. Um, along the path to that outlook, there was a strangely compelling sign uh, that read, uh, Beware of Bees During High Wind. Mm -hmm. And that is the title of my poem. Wow. Okay, cell phone here. I have to have a crutch. New Uanu Pali Outlook was made for another day. Gales of fog gust the lot of us. Unless we fight it, we are almost away. Along the path from limbering barks, so many drips damping us down. Above, their crowning thrashes, thrashes bewitched. Achieving the cliff, huddled by a stone restraint. What is there to see? Nothing. The fog so thick, it is a blind on our eyes, a gag in our throats. And then, and then the fog begins to lift, as if there are ghosts who hold us hostage, gift us with the sight of their paradise to drive us mad before they throw us over. Miss thin to a veil which drifts discarded. We view the molting mountainsides, inhabited hills, beyond but nigh an ocean wedded to its sky so high. It is a vision re-denied. Once again, the vista goes opaque in the fog. 
intruder, whispered by ghosts, or do I name myself? At our feet, as if in another world, a rooster and hen strut amidst bees, their chicks searching for feed. Lively, they lighten the mood, perhaps remembering the ghosts desist. In charity, they grant to each of us a clarity. One sees the honey of a prize is simply this, the stroll along a golden shore which curves and curves until it is a circle and complete. Another wants to carve a magical rune into a candle, then sit and smell the melting beeswax scent the night. And I, to what do I aspire? Witness. I see the generations, each a hexagonal vessel for stories, histories which form an island hive Hawaii. Who will guard this legacy of kings? Queen Lili Uokalani sang the answer. Brother, sister traveler, become an oracle, divine the queen's soul. Depart but sing aloha oi to honor its composer. Heed the sign. Beware of bees. Be fierce. Uh, I'm Sylvia Cavanaugh. I'm a teacher at North High School. Why do we have to have a seating chart? <laughs> because structure breeds creation because this city is segregated, because you don't live near her, because she goes to her synagogue once a week, because you don't speak her language, because poverty speaks its own language, because this might be your last chance, because she smiles when she's nervous, because she can draw, because she is organized, because she may organize you, because you thought Gypsy swing violin, because notes fly free, because notes on a page. Because we came from somewhere else, we were down and out. Because hip hop came from the South Bronx. Because we dream, because we rise up, because we sit down, because we take a knee. Because we pledge together, we pledge one nation. And this poem is called Hummus and Hot Dogs. When he crosses the bridge, wave at him. Better still, meet him in the middle, where the common ground of your footsteps will lead both of you to new land, where no one is foreign and home has many rooms. In the kitchen corner, the dictionary scratches out alien, illegal, stranger. The stove cooks up hummus and hot dogs, bratwurst on Thursdays. <laughs> I'm Ed Wurstein. I'm from Milwaukee, and uh, I am the East Region representative of the Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets. So if any of you are interested in joining a welcoming <clears throat> organization to, uh, you know, uh, share your poetry with, uh, I have some brochures, and I'm sitting right over there. The oldest of my four grandchildren was born in Santiago, Chile, 10 years ago. Citizen of the world, for Anthony. Welcome, citizen of Chile, Chileno Nuevo, born into the land of Allende. Open your virgin eyes wide to view the land that inspired Gabriela Mistral and Pablo Neruda, and be inspired to do great things. Welcome, American citizen, new American. Open your ears and listen to the poetry of Walt Whitman and Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Hear what America should be, could be. Born into the land of Pinochet, open your eager mind to learn the history of your two countries and how they are connected, to learn the bloody history of the continents that are united in your blood. Welcome, citizen of the world, 
human being, born in the new world, into the infancy of the next new world. Open your young heart and feel the love of your mother and your father. Look them over closely and see that flags and borders can be meaningless. Carry their love inside of you and their mixed blood and inspire others like your arrival inspires your family. Oh, the great things you'll see in your lifetime. Hello, I'm Tad. Um, I live in Port Washington, but it's on the same lake as here. Uh, the, was, the 2019 Wisconsin Poets Calendar also had a theme of Wisconsin people, celebrating people from everywhere. So I wrote a poem for that, and here it is. And it comes from an experience I had early in my career teaching at Farnsworth for a little bit. New Arrivals, 1980. Face each other. I am 23, they 13. Eyes are language. I arrive by college and car. They come from the war. Tigers, green jungle, mountains, rivers tearing families, still crying. I point and say door, clock, chair, desk. My name, eyes of wonder, my Lee, Kong, Tai, draw pictures for me. November, we talk. They teach me Nyo Zhang, Zhang Xia, as an invitation. Hand me a whole warm egg. Welcome to the new year. I'm Georgia Ressmeyer from Sheboygan, and my poem is called The Voyage. One, maple leaves snap like sails unfurling in a crowd of gusts. Earth and all her inhabitants, her elements, is about to set sail. As sunset smolders through treetop masts, I realize I've been pressed into service. There's no turning back. Farewell, my predictable landlubber life. You've been a soothing illusion for decades. Two, before long, we're becalmed. The absence of wind and rain shuts us in with noxious odors. Toxic fumes infiltrate our lungs. Many gasp for breath. This is nothing like the home of my youth. We travel together on a ship so vast, its lower decks can never be plumbed. There's no end of misery here. Three, consciousness of owning a stake in conserving resources came too late for most, who blocked all awareness that the ship stores could run out. Now we realize we should have cut our ra rations in half ages ago, then halved them again and again. Four, our captain hungers for melee, feeds on danger and drama. Sometimes on frigate earth, we run out the big guns, practice firing at targets. I've decided to sit this skirmish out, conceal myself below decks, conspire with others to expose and eradicate tyranny, all its guises, its falsehoods. In, for, in fact, for the good of frigate earth, I'm decidedly mutinous. Five. Bravado aside, I believe the scientists who predict this voyage will end badly, that our captain, officers, wealthy passengers will abandon frigate Earth like rats, relocate to another planet before most of us figure out we're sinking. Earth has been a beautiful experiment doomed from the start by the behavior of humans, our greed, short-sightedness, 
violence. We command the planet and behave as if we want to destroy it. Our current leaders take full advantage, exploiting, despoiling, not giving back. Six, suddenly a ferocious gust shakes us, heaves frigate earth through turbulent swells. Exhilaration turns to terror that the wind's escalating tantrum will shred our vessel and everything in it. We cling to the splinters of youthful delusions. We strain to believe the captain's deceptions. Seven, I wish I could report that Frigate Earth weathers the storm without significant damage, but she does not. The main mast is broken in half. Statecraft walked the plank. Democracy is on the rocks. It's up to us to free and repair the ship before it breaks apart. Fight for the continued existence of Earth. We're all in the same boat. We depend on one another for survival. So I just recently had my DNA tested, which is super cool because I had no idea I'm adopted. No idea what my background was up until. Now I'm going to be 50 next year. So um, and I have four kids, um, all of which had no idea what their, what their background or their DNA was. So I was kind of thinking about that. And I thought, you know, that was interesting how that came into play. Their mother is, is Native American. Um, uh, fifty percent Native American, and she's part uh, English, British, and I am forty percent African American through the Bahamas, forty percent Irish, and twenty percent uh, British. So it's interesting. So um, these are my thoughts after thinking about that. Cross copulation, coupled with migration, creates a diverse nation, which everyone should have a place in. Yet, based on the color of your face, skin. That's just still not always the case. See, based on our sparring society, there should be a war that rages inside of me as I was born with more than one race that resides in me and not one of them can be erased. Yes, from all over the world my ancestors came, the Irish, the African, the Brits, the Bahamians, through hardship and challenge, some of which still remain, some they'd hoped we'd be rid of, yet still get replayed, they remain bearing witness right here in my mixed DNA, that even though the road to our freedom still needs to be paved, we have grown and evolved and have come a long way. And when you think of it all at the end of the day, we are all very much the same. I'm Bobby Lovell. I live in De Pere, but I grew up here. I have two kids, one of which is an immigrant. And the poem I brought is called Lullaby for Troubled Times. Forget this world, its disrepair. Forget the poison land and air. Forget the stranded polar bear. Sleep, baby, sleep. Forget how sea will overflow. Forget the bleaching reef below. Forget the giant garbage flow. Sleep, baby, sleep. Forget the hunger greed can't quell. Forget the dizzy carousel of toys and games they try to sell. Sleep, baby, sleep. Forget the sick of heart and head. Forget the guns they love instead. Forget the hate that hate has bred. Sleep, baby, sleep. Forget the insults you will hear. Forget the need to persevere. Forget that they don't want you here. Sleep, baby, sleep. Forget the left. Forget the right. Forget the laws they will rewrite. While many suffer out of spite, sleep, baby, sleep. Forget the wars you didn't choose. Forget the children they abuse. Forget the life you stand to lose. Sleep, baby, sleep. Forget the bombs that might be dropped. Each power play they try to top. Forget the end that can't be stopped. Sleep, baby, sleep. Sleep with progress. Science, too. Diplomacy, the golden rule. Dream of all the good you do. Sleep, baby, sleep. Mm -hmm. 
I'm Isabel Martinez. I'm from Manitowoc, Wisconsin. I'm 13 years old, and my poem is called Immigrants. I, I miss my dad. M, Mexico's too far away. M, misunderstood. I, I will never stop fighting. G, got milk, not without immigrants. R, refugees are welcome here. A, anti-racism. N, not seeing you in seven years. T, trying hard to get you back. Uh, I'm Jim. I'm a local. Sylvia, I'm a teacher at North High, and she actually told me to bring this. So, uh, Of course, I did what we tell our students to do. Just listen and do it. So, uh, It's a part of the dawn. Picture yourself as a part of the dawn, gazing at the, as the morning comes with your eyes. Look out there and tell yourself to go on. Science helps explain the phenomenon and time in space we all visualize. Picture yourself as a part of the dawn. Men and women all walk across the lawn up to the houses to say their goodbyes. Look out there and tell yourself to go on. Tomorrow, many of them will be gone, exploring the frontiers among the skies. Picture yourself as a part of the dawn. Because of those travelers rolling on, you dream of your space race when your ship flies. Look out there and tell yourself to go on. Durable boots and clothes made of nylon. Stand on the mountain and look at the skies. Picture yourself as a part of the dawn. Look out there and tell yourself to go on. Sorry. I have three daughters. Um, two live in Wisconsin and one lives in Brooklyn, New York. And so we're able, my husband and I are able to um, go out to Brooklyn on occasion. Um, and this poem came from one of those trips. <clears throat> Persimmons. Persimmons. There they are on 4th Avenue in Brooklyn, New York at 85th Street. Outside, a bodega heaped in huge numbers in cardboard boxes, ripe, ready. They share space with cantaloupes, two for two dollars, and avocados, four for a buck. They're ripe, too. Need to be sold today. Persimmons? We don't have them at home in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin until Christmas time. Then they're a dollar fifty-nine apiece. Persimmon bread is to be relished. It's a different ethnic taste than German or Dutch, as is most of the population here in my neighborhood in Wisconsin. In Brooklyn, you can switch from one ethnicity to another daily. You can ask and learn, cook and savor. Glory in the wonders of world offerings for a few coins in exchange for knowledge. You can take home fruits and veggies from a corner of the earth you didn't know. Mostly, you can take home an interchange, a human link, a dialogue to be repeated another day in passing corners on sidewalks. Value sometimes is not to be judged monetarily. Value sometimes comes with a smile and a promise of friendship and returning. Before I read my second poem, uh, Ted reminded me of another announcement that I forgot to make before. One of the things we do every year in the East region is we have a reading from our poet's calendar, and it's in the fall and uh, in Milwaukee, and so on November 17th, the Saturday, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, at the Milwaukee Central Library. If you have never been to the central branch of the Milwaukee Library, it's a beautiful building. Just to go there to see that is worth the trip. But there's a reading from the calendar. So everyone is, in, is invited. We'll have calendars for sale. They make great gifts. And if you can't make it and you want a calendar, Talk to Lisa or talk to Sylvia, and they'll let me know, and I'll get one to you. This the theme of the the, the um, name of the day is 100,000 Poets for Change, and one of the things that needs to be changed in the world, besides immigration policy, is gender inequality. And I write a lot of poems about the news, and so I was reading a headline in May, so the title of this poem is a headline from The Guardian. The headline is, 
eight out of 10 women have felt unable to cope in the past year. So I'm wondering, who are the other two? <laughs> What's their secret? I'd like to learn some of their coping strategies because frankly, I'm not coping too well myself. Do they live on a deserted island? Did they invest in one of those sensory deprivation flotation booths and never come out? Did one of them shoot Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> Set fire to a Trump Tower? Was there any alcohol involved? <laughs> if there was alcohol involved, I'd like to hear about it. This one does have a name because I wrote it a while ago, so I had time to think about it. Um, it's called What We Make. Blood runs red like a river, trickling into the ground to feed the impartial hate that has grown for an eternity, until the earth turns against itself, drifting in dusty waves of a mirage, while cities are drowned by heat and haze and sun that shines too bright for the dark deeds done. As souls turn against each other, blinded by ambition disguised as beliefs, these genocides being done in the name of a man who preached only love, an argument born of God sounds like the devil's work, but he just laughs as we tear ourselves apart. Ignorance needs no help to spread, being born of irrational intolerance, causing women to fear for their lives simply for the grand crime of existing, the people led to freedom, prisoners of their own people's small minds, and taste for innocent lives. What madness was this born of? Fanatical fools trying to take a birthright that was never theirs, that was there only for the ones they kill. Dark metal shines bright, hot in the sun, surrounded by screams of the dying and flames of unrightful revenge. This is the legacy we leave behind. When Jesus absolved us of sin, he expected some of us to be good enough to make it to heaven. So my second poem is called Change, and it's just how we need to change as a society. When I think about change, I have to stop and think. It takes time to arrange all my thoughts to clink. I wish the world would rearrange itself to interlink. Farmers created a grange so they did not have, it, have to have a dink. The world is about to disarrange, people getting a hoodwink. It's becoming a time to estrange, and that is a kink. We want the world to rearrange, it's my generation to rethink. But all the deranged stuff, it's time for us to uplink. <laughs> I think when we're younger, we think older people don't know what they're doing. <laughs> but now that I'm older, they know what they're doing. This is called Grown Wild. I've let my hair grow wild in some rebellion against the scars confining me. I comb it sometimes, but it doesn't last. It strays in childlike fascination, branching out in its own adventures, Static flight, collar curling, feeling like a hover of insects around my head. And I don't have to be careful of scars confining me, incisions attempts to re-engage separate fields of skin, requiring me to turn this way or that, lay flat, breathe. So I let my hair grow wild like a field, breathing all the time, like a forest of possibilities, rebellion against the order of aging. So I'm going to read one last poem, and I just want to thank everyone for coming, for sharing, for sticking to the theme. That was awesome, all of you, and for listening. And uh, just, you know, keep reading poetry, keep sharing poetry. I do really believe that poetry can change the world. It might take a while, but we're, we're working on it. And um, I'm going to share a poem that it's a form called a villanelle, and I only mention that because uh, you'll hear a lot of repetition and rhyming in this poem. It's kind of an old traditional style. And it starts with a sentence I read in a book called Learning to Walk in the Dark by kind of a contemporary theologian named Barbara Brown Taylor. And the, her sentence that inspired me was, I and everything I love have come from the furnace of the stars. So this is called, We Come from the Furnace of the Stars. We come from the furnace of the stars, and in their blazing light we gleam. Together, all this world is ours. Our lives rain down 
as showers and all the waters and all the streams flow from the furnace of the stars. All this love that ever flowers tied, to, tied each to each on threaded seam. Together all this world is ours. In every color, every hour, every place where dreamers dream, together, I'm sorry, every place where dreamers dream, we come from the furnace of the stars. Raise up as truth to power, and do not fear its grimy gleam. Together, all this world is ours. With voices raised, we tower. We care, we share, we be, we seem. Together, all this world is ours, for we are from the furnace of the stars. Thank you. Thank you.